Welcome, fellow androids, to the first episode of RimWorld Android Sanctuary, a story of individualist androids on the desolate world of slaving mechanophobes who try to build a sanctuary to protect and rescue other androids. This series is the February miniseries marathon winner proposed by Grey Hermit and was streamed live on Twitch one time only, February 12th. The full details of the series, including the mod list, save game file, Soundtrack information, rules, lore, and goals is in the description of the video. Episode 1. Hide to Survive. Here we are. Uh, let me show you the world here. This is a tiny world. A tiny little dust ball, as you can see. Um, the size of this world is a result of mods, by the way. And we are living in the Android Sanctuary. Well, it's not built yet. Uh, nestled into an extreme desert. The purpose of living in an extreme desert is to not attract as many uh, humans that are more sensitive to the temperature. So it is purposefully very hostile, very, very hot. Here is the map tile. Very typical large hills with slate, granite, sandstone. And... The factions, we have the Android Collective, led by Sky Collective, the Stello Pasturus, led by Snow Lagrange, the Pirate Justicars by Bea D Damien, the Slave Imperium by Micah Can, and the Thrall by Bash, number GP. Uh, there are some hidden factions, of course. There's the Mech Hive and the Gene Lion that we'll meet later, I suspect. Uh, our ideology is exactly how I posted it to you all. And then our characters. So, Gray is an escaped android architect. He was a research model android architect and decided at the right old age of 314 that he was going to set out and create a android sanctuary for himself. Uh, he is a fast learner, industrious, iron-willed, with these passions. He's very capable. He built up these skills so that he might be able to survive on his own. He has brought two lesser intelligent androids with him, hoping that he'll be able to improve them. Orbot and Agrobot. They are traitless, passionless, but have some basic skills. They are tier 2 androids. As you can see here, male tier 2, and gray is a male tier 4. Actually, calling them male is kind of pointless because there is no genders. And here's the map tile. All the information about this series, for the most part, can be found in the commands listed up top in the title. Or for YouTube, it would be in the description. And the raffle is going to be done exclusively on Discord. So I'm going to kick off the first raffle in about 10 minutes or so. So let's get going. And thank you for all the love in the activity feed. I appreciate it. And it seems like I'm going to be here for the rest of the day. Uh, first things first, to hide from society, we're going to need to live in these mountains. So I am going to first do some work priorities. Firefight, patient, and basic, I always set to one. Uh, we're not allowed to hunt as part of our ideology. No slaughtering and no hunting. We can eat meat, but we just can't be the ones that make the meat meat, if that makes sense. So we can't kill farm animals and we can't uh, hunt. Not that there's much to hunt in extreme desert. There's only three iguana. Um, so taking hunting off of the work priorities entirely. And then for mining, I'm going to have Gray and Agrabot or Orbot bot, uh, mine, and Agrabot is just going to haul. And I am going to pick this little mountain here to dig into for a bit of a refuge. Uh, while Orbot, while Gray digs there, I'm going to have Orbot go find some silver. There we go. Now, every moment here is precious because 
robots don't have hunger, they have energy. Now they are able to consume food, but at half the efficiency that a human would. Which means that in order to keep these robots running and not dysfunctional, running out of power, I need to feed them a lot. Uh, so that is going to be the first constraint. So here we go, Orbot, Agrobot, and Gray. I'm gonna queue up uh, Agrobot to haul this pemmican away. I know that I could caravan it, but at the moment, I don't think I will. So let's see here. We are going to head, oops, head on into this mountain. Also, the overhead mountain is going to be important. Wow. ALS Gamer, thanks for all the gifted subs. Actually, a whole lot of you, too. Panda and Karma, Banish Puppet, etc. I'm sorry I'm not getting to all of you, but I'm just trying to introduce the series. I'll be better at this uh, a little bit down the line. So Gray is trying to dig out the start of a sanctuary. And... Agrobot is hauling the food in. Uh, the reason I'm focusing on food first is so that the iguana don't go for it. Now, the trouble is I'm not allowed to harm the iguana. So if they do go for it, I can't really stop them other than to pick it up in caravanning. So um, it's going to be important for us to get that covered up quick. And Orbot's going for some silver. as Silver is an important component of androids. So Gray is just going, oh, there's some overhead mountain. Deeper and deeper and deeper into this mountain. Also, the extreme temperatures don't bother Gray so much because he is um, he is a high tier android. So if you take a look at his temperature range, he's good up until 70 Celsius. But these Agrobots are only good to 40 Celsius. And at the moment, it's already 43 Celsius. So there's also the issue that we're going to have where... Um, these robots are going to overheat relatively soon. The the Agrobot and Orbot. And, and Agrobot and Orbot will be renamed shortly. But um, it's going to be important to get them cooled off quick. Now, the, the androids are a little bit tougher than their organic counterparts. But it depends on the tier. Tier 1 androids are really just drones. They're like droids that are weak and easily destructible. And... Um, and are incapable of free will. Uh, does Gray need the character channel access still? Uh, he probably does, yeah. If he's if he's here. Yeah. So Gray is named after Gray Hermit. As you can see. As a result of his proposed miniseries being the one that got played. And that, of course, is a popular poll that everybody had access to vote for. So here's some compacted steel. Now, the issue with compacted steel, I love that it's in the mountain. Uh, it's slower to mine through. Compacted steel, compacted machinery, all of the ores, they are slower to mine. Uh, so, as cool as it is to have compacted steel, I have to be careful because uh, there, there's going to be some issues that come with it. So, I think what I'm going to do is plan on putting a door here. But I'm going to keep the door forbidden for now. And let's try to figure out um, some layout. So I'm going to put uh, like a research area bay here. Where we have the multi-analyzer or the research, a multi-analyzer and some additional space. Then this here is going to be a wall. Which means this here will be a hallway uh, to the room starting layout. So the reason why I'm focusing on research first, I'm going to focus on research and I'm going to focus on um, air conditioning. Research first because I want to try to get to a point where I can power up my robots with their batteries. At the moment, they're going to be using food and I have a very limited amount of food and because we're in the extreme desert, uh, the amount of food that I have available to me is going to shrink quickly. So that is why I'm going to focus on research to try to use battery power instead of food as battery power is going to be uh, vastly superior and then i'm going to focus on air conditioning so agrobot and orbot don't die of heat stroke because yes robots can overheat 
and they have similar body parts to humans where they have um, coolant for blood, so on and so forth. And then the other thing I want to do is to find some overhead mountain or non overhead mountain areas uh, that will allow me to dig out an air conditioner. In about four minutes, I'll kick off the first get, uh, raffle. Uh, so 15 minutes past the hour, we'll kick that off. All right, I don't even need to dig past this hallway. Straight to the research room. And then Agrabah, you continue to haul the pemmican because I do not want to be feeding iguanas. We respect animals, but we don't want to feed them. This isn't a zoo. Nope. Let's cue this up to be mined. He's like wandering away. He's like, oh, I'm done. Sorry, Gray, you're not done. Now, some of the other advantages is these robots, of course, don't need comfort and they don't sleep. They don't rest. So they're powerful in that regard. And I'm not even going to worry about this bottom row at the moment. That will be a future dig. Agrobot is almost done hauling all the food. The rest of the stuff here, the nano kits are equivalent to industrial tech medicine. And then we have components. You all know what components are. And then there are upgrade kits as well. So, uh, here they are. Upgrade kits allow you to uh, do some basic upgrades to robots, like changing their personality or uh, overclocking them, that kind of thing. Agrabot, how close are you to being done? Not very, but he's working on it. Right, I'm going to start speeding up time if I can handle it. Yeah, at the very start, it's going to be a little slow going because it's very easy to fail this scenario. If you do anything wrong, you'll overheat and die. And uh, then I'm trying to avoid that. Uh, outside, we also have the typical, like, crash-landed start, so there are some ship chunks, and then there are, there's gonna be some random steel out here as well, I don't really know where it is, but, uh, auto haulers will find it for sure. And to my moderators, I, I, I can run the first giveaway, so... I'm gonna end my... My temporary one, that was not a real giveaway. And of course, this giveaway is on Discord. So join Discord and sync your accounts if you haven't done yet to gain access to the giveaway. So I'm gonna be triggering, triggering that in just a second. All right, so I have two giveaways up, one for Orbot and one for Agrobot. And there's the timer. The timer's roughly, it's not synced to the giveaway exactly. Uh, the timer will end before the actual giveaway ends, but it's, it's close enough for all intents and purposes. So good luck to you all. And then one of the advantages that, and I didn't speak to this yet, but one of the advantages that will end up happening here is once you have a character, I have a special channel on the Discord server that allows you to uh, pick the color of your robot, pick your profession, pick your weapon preference, pick how you would like to be upgraded, all that kind of stuff. So Orbot just finished up that uh, silver node, and indeed that silver node is done, it is tapped. So Orbot's going to start helping to dig out a coolant area. Let me know if you think the music's a little too loud. I didn't have time to normalize it all. All right, so what I'm planning on doing is putting a high-tech research match here, and then for now, it's going to be a wood... Um,
a wood uh, power generator. So let's get that laid out. Let me turn off auto home zone and turn on the auto repair in the home zone and then rehome this because I don't really care about the outside. And then I also will be bringing in that food uh, to protect it from iguana. So I'm going to call this food preferred any food, which includes pemmican to be moved. So Agrabot has to move things twice, which is unfortunate for him, but that's just the way it is today. And here's the wood fire generator. And then with the wood fire generator, we're also going to want a standing lamp. Uh, so I'm going to dig this out to put the lamp in. And taking a look, we do already have heat stroke. So there is a, uh, a very finite amount of time that I am working with. Uh, Agrabot, what I want you to do is start hauling in the components and the steel. And we're already starting to eat the pemmican here. I want to get off of a pemmican diet as fast as I can. So here is the high-tech research bench. And then a standing lamp for now, because I, uh, I don't have the resources I need to make. Or rather, I don't have a wall for a wall light. And yes, indeed, I'm running wall lights. So Gray, I'm going to have you haul steel and then build with it. You're pretty sure this is a toilet? Kind of looks like one. Alright, so I'm just um, trying to find some, like, empty overhead mountain areas up here to be appropriate for a, a, a chimney. This area is good, but it's also very close to the entrance, which means it runs the risk of being attacked and destroyed by raiders. We wouldn't want that. All right, Gray, grab a nice handful of ore. And Orbot's starting to help haul. I kind of wanted him to uh, continue digging. You're liking the music choices so far? Well, thank you. Spent a lot of time on it, that's for sure. Probably an inappropriate amount. All right, Orbot. Find us a chimney. So the reason you need a chimney is it, you can't really install air conditioning if you can't dump the heat somewhere. It's not like Vulture's series where it just deletes the heat magically. You have to put the heat somewhere. Uh, there will be a playlist for the music, yes. I'll get that up on my website. And that signals like a 30 second warning of the giveaway closing, so... It is coming shortly. And yes, Discord has the raffle, as is very hopefully clearly indicated in the about command. Um, I'm going to have to dig through steel. So I could, I'm trying to avoid setting up the air conditioner too close to the entrance so it can't get shot at and destroyed because it's kind of an expensive thing to get busted. But here we go. I'm having gray. Let's haul wood and then set up the research table. All right, Panda. And Techie, you guys have won. Panda, you are the Orbot. And then Techie, you are the Agrabot. So congratulations. And then you have a character card to fill out on Discord uh, so that I can actually uh, get you guys 
and your preferences in to the game, which is a, a different uh, a different method that I haven't used in the past. But this way you can affect change continually. So I can, anytime I want to make updates, you don't, I don't have to message you. Your preferences are already known. So it should be a pretty, uh, pretty handy system. Gray, going for a walk. Okay. Um, Gray, I need you down here. So another thing I'm going to do, at least for now, is put them on pure work schedules. They don't need to sleep. So sleep is sort of pointless. So they're on pure work schedules. And I'm going to queue up basic robotics for research. And change his research priorities. So that that's what he does. All right, this spot here uh, looks like it could be my air conditioning area. So that will be very handy. And then Agrabot is just hauling in the rest of the stuff. Let's dig this out. So my plan is to put the air conditioners like this and here. And then we'll have to dig out a way to service them. A sort of service area. Um, hmm. Maybe a little bit lower, actually. Maybe where he's standing. So that there's space. Yeah. I like that better. Uh, Gray, I'm going to need you to help out with this mining so that it can go a little faster. And another thing I'm going to do is throw another light in here so we can actually see what we're doing. And that will speed the process up. Agrabot is still hauling in the delicate stuff that we need to protect. And then another thing I want to do is to start to clean this up so that I can research faster. So, Gray, let's get you back over here to mine. And I'll be done with this roof overlay shortly, I think. So the plan is for there to be a door here. And then eventually maybe stone walls, but for start it will be the steel walls. Hmm. No, here, this will work. Like that. I don't have to use up so much space. Alright, Gray. Get building. And welcome all to the stream. Thank you for being here. All right, so Obard is already starting to get uh, heat stroked, as I knew that that was coming. All right, then I'm gonna have to run a line, a power line, close enough so that the air conditioner can hit it. Probably that's close enough. And I'm gonna put Gray's priority for construction a little bit higher. I'm going to probably set up two air conditioners just in case I need to, but probably one will be enough. Why not just pump the heat outside? Uh, because of rule number one in the rules. We have to hide. Having an air conditioner stuck into a mountain kind of makes it obvious that you live there. Because if you imagine walking past here, other than some of the stuff out here, this just looks like a hole in the, hole in the mountain. It doesn't look like uh, it's inhabited, and we're trying to not look like we're in, uh, living here. So eventually, all of this stuff is going to be pulled inside. In fact, I'm going to delete this stockpile and start to put this stockpile here so that we don't store things outdoors. So here is a chimney to drop the heat, and we can build a roof over there, and then um, I have one more spot for another air conditioner here that I can add. Oh, Coco, thanks for uh, resubbing. Oh, my goodness, there's so much happening in the feed.
Okay, there we go. So now we have air conditioning. I'm going to actually keep one of these off for now. Although it doesn't really matter because the excess power... No, yeah, I'll just leave it on. The excess power doesn't... We're not storing it in a battery or anything like that. This wood fire generator is um, running dirty. So that doesn't so much matter. And it is now 85 indoors, 107 out, or 28 Celsius, 42 Celsius. So the air conditioner is working. And at this point, what I'm going to do is... Um, Mine a little bit of the steel, and then I want to explore more of this mountain to see if there's other things in this mountain that could be useful to me. Alright, so Panda. You are the Orbot, and you want to be a crafter. Got it. You have no crafting ability yet, but someday. So now Agrobot is going far and wide for some of the steel that's out here as a result of uh, our sort of crash landed start. Actually, hold up on that. Don't worry about that. Would I allow... Be allowed to plant cacti as they grow in deserts? Uh, no. Nope, we're not using the outdoors. Right, I'm gonna do some force cleaning here. And there we go, we have basic robotics, and I'm trying to get charging station. Now, charging station is um, one of several different ways to charge up uh, robots. A cheaper, quicker option is the Android pod. But I don't particularly like the Android pod unless you have to use it because the Android pod only allows one robot at a time. And if you have a population greater than one, um, it's not the best way to charge up. No solar panels outside, no outside generators, no hydrothermic vents whatsoever. Nothing outside at all. Nothing is outside. It is part of the rules as pretty clearly stated. Rule number one. It's right here as you as you, uh, for reference. Stay hidden as best as possible. Only colony footprint visible from the outside should be nested doors. No building, farming, ranching, or deep drilling. All right, at this point, I think we've um, established that we have a, a fair bit of steel, and I'm gonna start to explore this mountain. See if there's a larger pocket of um, overhead or non-overhead mountain that I could possibly utilize for um, uh, for long-range mineral scanning or anything like that. Because there's a lot of reasons we want skylights. Um, we could do hydroponics with sunlight. We could do well in this heat, probably not. It would need to be covered, but we could do um, solar panels or mineral scanners because they require unroofed areas and Agrobot you are techie and the preference color for you is green and you are going to stay a planter grower perfect and then Panda you're going to turn purple as soon as I'm uh as soon as I'm able to run that. Got it. All right, Panda, keep keep mining. Well, someday you're gonna be a crafter. Someday you will be a great crafter, but today you are still an Orbot. <laughs> okay, so here we go. We've starting to get some um, not overhead mountain, which is good. And we are most of that, we're half the way to charging station. Alright, I'm going to move the chunks a little closer, because I do intend to not store chunks outside eventually, as that is a good indicator that we live here. But for now, I'm putting them outside just for space purposes. And then let's um, zoom out and add some more home zones here. Alright, Techie. Do you not have stuff to... Yeah, you're idle. Okay. 
Well, if you're idle, I'm going to start breaking down these ship chunks. And then allow you to construct. So that we can get some free components. Another thing I'm probably going to want to do is to get some recreation. Now, Gray is a higher level robot. So he, his higher level sentience means that he requires recreation um, for his mood, whereas Panda and Techie are sort of more basic bots. Now, they, I do intend to get them upgraded at some point. Uh, no, 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 no. Don't construct. Um, where they'll have personalities, and maybe that's not even for the better, because they could adopt personalities that are negative, you know, like um, abrasive or creepy voice or something like that. There's no way to really tell what kind of personality they'll get, but for now, they're very easy to satisfy. Most of the robots in the world are basic um, enslaved robots. They're not uh, intelligences because the other societies, the other factions see intelligent robots as a danger. Oops, that's not what I meant to do. Just don't refuel it. Thank you. All right, this might be big enough for solar. Solar is a four by four, so it looks like it could be. And we'll just keep keep searching this mountain. And then I eventually uh, would like to live in a lot of these mountains adjacent. So one of the things that we have to consider is not ruining the mountain unless we think it's unusable um, by digging into it for resources. So for instance, uh, this little mountain here, I think it's fine to dig out the steel because it's not like this is ever going to be a sanctuary. But in these larger mountains like this one, I might not want to dig out the steel because if I dig out the steel, I might not be able to get a hallway or passageway in here. So we just have to be careful about how we treat these um, geologic, uh, you know, structures around us because if we ruin them, uh, they become less useful to us. All right, so something else I'm going to do is a table, a stool, a chest table, and a horseshoe pin. Maybe not there. Uh, I don't horseshoe pin. Because Gray is going to want some... Some... Recreation. There's also a benefit of um, having a bit of a dining room or a rec room because we'll be able to have the benefit of, you know, the mood benefit. And yeah, this definitely fits solar. So uh, if this fits solar after batteries, I'm going to get solar tech and then I'll probably have you guys vote on what to do thereafter. Alright, so Rex Starved, let's give you anything schedule so that you can start recreating. And then we'll get back to research. How you doing, Yoda? He's already a sleepy boy. You know, we have 9 hours and 18 minutes to go, buddy. You can't be that sleepy already. So with the charging station up, uh, let me start to use battery power. I haven't built it yet, but I'm about to. So, Gray, your construction skill is 10. Good. Uh, so, charging station. This thing can be moved. Uh, so, it doesn't really matter where I put it. As I can always relocate it. And this is why I got the silver. Okay, there we go. Now, the way the charging station works is at idle, it uh, draws 250 watts. And then when it's being used, it draws more power depending on the tier of the Android. So high level Androids like Gray will draw more power 
from the charging station than uh, lower Androids like Panda or Techie, which are just cheaper to power up. So as you can see, if we're all using it at once, we brown out. One of the reasons to research batteries so that we are not constantly browning out. And we're going to continue looking for the overhead mountain here. Shellbell, thanks for all the gifted subs. Cheers. So one of the advantages of no longer using pemmican is in solar flares, uh, we can use pemmican to to eat if we need power, things like that. So it's it's although I'd like to be a robot that doesn't need to consume um, the organic material. I think in the reality, when we're caravanning and we don't have access to a charging station or when we are in a solar flare or something like that, um, food is obviously going to be pretty important. And here, gray is recharging. There we go. And let me power up the research table again. Where are you going, gray? Ah, you're really swamped in the RP session here. Well, I I appreciate you guys turning out. I um I love this stuff. Let me let me keep the music going. I like the soundtrack. Uh, and of course, this entire soundtrack will be I'll I'll put it up online. You can actually download all this music for free legally from the YouTube audio library. It's all um, copyright free, DMCA free music. Come on, robots, one charge at a time. You keep browning me out. <laughs> Techie, Panda Killing the network here Killing the network Alright, we are just about the way done with battery Techies hauling steel Panda, what are you doing? Oh, you're breaking down uh, ship chunks Cool that means I don't have mining queued up for you. Batteries are done. All right, let's get solar. And then uh, throw down some batteries so that we can store power. Uh, batteries obviously can be relocated, so I'll put batteries. No, I don't want to put batteries there. Does anything weird happen during solar flares? Uh, yes. Yes, it does. During a solar flare, what ends up happening is um, all the androids in the colony run at about 60% efficiency. Their consciousness is reduced. And then, of course, you know, everything that's plugged in loses power, as that is typical solar flare behavior. Panda, did you just really do this? Naughty robot. Oh, there's nowhere to haul it and store it. Okay, naughty rad. Uh, I forgive you. Obviously, I don't want to leave um, components out there because that's not wise. So, next research. I'm going to have you guys vote on this. Before I put up the poll here, I want to uh, describe some options. So one of the options could be to push multi-analyzer. Obviously, there's a lot of benefits having a multi-analyzer. In order to do that, we're going to need uh, smithing and machining. So smithing is going to be uh, one of the options. Also, machining leads to blowback and gas operation, which is weapons, because currently we are weaponless. And because of our ideology, we sort of hate using Neolithic weapons. We can make bows, but obviously the limited amount of wood that we have, it's ideal if I don't just make bows because I don't have a lot of wood. It's 50 wood per bow. So that's one option. Another option would be to uh, start to push tier one androids. Now, tier one androids, obviously, we're not going to make them. That would be against the rules. Tier one androids are very basic Android colonists, they're basically slaves, and we don't believe in that kind of slavery, but it would lead to tier two androids, which leads to other tech here. Um, we could also 
Uh, reasonably research biofuel refining. Because that's a pretty good method to preserve power or hydroponics. I suspect that we are going to have some sort of underground mountainous hydroponic farm where we farm rice, turn it into chem fuel, and keep things powered, keep us powered. Uh, there's also drugs that we make with chem fuel. Um, so there's that. And then multi-analyzer would be an option. Or rather, smithing is the prerequisite for that. But um, yeah, what else? Once I make the... Hmm. Yeah, maybe that's just... Uh, I'll include the series servers. So the series servers, there's three types of servers, and I have to describe this for those that don't know Android. There are hacking servers, which allows you to hack enemy androids, where you can get, upload viruses or temporarily convert them to your side, although they go unconscious, permanently convert them to your side, but that costs a lot of hacking points, or, you know, have them explode. Um, there is security, which protects you from hacking, and then there's skills, which allows you to uh, have your servers basically, like kind of like mining crypto, have them mine skill points for you to be able to assign to your androids. So, the problem is, um, servers need to be cold, so it's a significant power investment. It's, um, it's requires a lot of power. But there you go. There's your five options up top. And, uh, I'll put a, I'll put a timer on that in just a minute. So we are currently researching solar so that I can stop using a wood fire generator. Where are you going, little guy? You leaving the map tile? I wouldn't blame you. Silly fire generator. Well, there goes all my stored power, but it wasn't a lot of stored power, so, you know. Say la vie. And timer's up. Alright, I am going to need to refuel this. Because we ran out of power. Before I was able to get solar up. So Techie, you are hauling steel. And Panda, you are deconstructing ship chunks. Got it. Alright, instead of deconstructing that ship chunk... There we go. And Techie is recharging, Panda's recharging. So what ends up happening is... Um, if you run out of power, it's very much like starvation. It doesn't happen instantly where you're starved. It just... It's like malnourishment. And then eventual starvation. So it's not like... When our power meter runs out, we're immediately unconscious. That's just not how it works, thankfully. Kilgore, thank you for the resub and Jimba for the bits. Cheers, guys. And what I'm trying to do is conserve power for now because it's uh, a precious resource. Uh, also, uh, Panda, I'm going to have you, because this looks hopeful. I'm going to have you continue the search for solar uh, possibility. And there's an eclipse. So, you know, screw solar, I guess. Thanks, game. Thank you for tuning in to Android Sanctuary, which originally streamed live on Twitch February 12th. Android Sanctuary is the February miniseries marathon winner, streamed live one time only, February 12th. If you would like to know more about the process of the miniseries or all of the series that I put out, the How Series Are Chosen link on my website, Radamont.com, will fill you in on the details. If you have any feedback or questions for me, let me know in the comments below. But please keep in mind that this series is over. It only streams live once, so suggestions cannot be incorporated. 
If you would like to join my gaming community, Rodamont.com or the description of this video also have a link to Discord. Thank you so very much for watching. A special thank you to all of my Twitch subscribers, Patreon patrons, and viewers like you that support the channel. I hope to catch you next episode or an upcoming stream. Farewell, and stay safe out there, androids.